Three million people were killed in the American War, and the incense sticks still burn in memory of the fallen. But for many, the war is still not over. The soil of peacetime contains the instruments of death and destruction dropped from above more than 40 years ago. This is the story of the bombs, mines and other artillery that did not complete its deadly mission, lying in wait for a new generation of victims. It's the story of those who live to tell the tale, and of those who don't. And it's the story of those who once fought the war, but who now fight to make Vietnam safe. This is the story of the rusting assassins. This team from the NGO Project Renew has heard reports of bombs being found in nearby farmland. 83% of the land here is still contaminated with unexploded ordnance. Guangxi province used to be a heavily bomb and shell uh, area uh, in, during war time. Uh, and uh, since the war ended in 1975 up to now, uh, unexploded ordnance or USO have claimed more than 7,000 casualties. I'm warned to watch where I tread. Fragments of explosives still litter the surface of the land. If we step on that, it would explode. So that is the detonator of a hand grenade. The EOD task today is uh, origin originated from a USO uh, discovery uh, reported by uh, two schoolboys uh, aged about 14 years old. They were tending buffalo the other days. He has found uh, one item of uh, 155 pusher tie and recently uh, he found three more items of mortars and three fuses. This 81 millimeter high explosive motor. I love fuel. And two fuses. And that's all from that's one place. One This is a small caliber of munition bin. And this bin contains large caliber munitions, as you can see. This, uh, this bin, you can see uh, all the munitions containing white phosphorus, WP munitions. United States involvement in the war in South Vietnam, as well as in Laos and Cambodia, was an attempt to stop communist aggression and keep Southeast Asia free. For many of the young soldiers sent to fight, the propaganda didn't wash. 
One of them was Chuck Searcy, who's since devoted his life to making Vietnam safe once more. The, the, the red shows the, um, shows the bomb damage. Uh, my first involvement with Vietnam came at, at the courtesy of Uncle Sam, 1967, when I was sent to Vietnam as a U.S. Army enlisted man. And uh, during my year in Vietnam uh, as a military intelligence analyst, that was my job, uh, and through the Tet Offensive, which was a pretty bad time, I, I really changed my views about Vietnam and realized that the, the war was a, not only a tragic foreign policy mistake by the U.S. government, but actually the U.S. government was lying to us. When I came back to Vietnam for the first time in 1992, and I saw the extent of the damage and the, uh, the slow recovery that Vietnam was undergoing, I, I began to think that maybe I could come back and help with that process. We uh, devastated Vietnam with more ordnance that uh, more ordnance dropped from the air and used on the ground than had ever been used in the history of warfare. Um, there were more bombs dropped in Vietnam than all the bombs in World War II in Europe and the Pacific. Vietnam was a very small country the size of the state of New Mexico in the U.S. Uh, and uh, the Pentagon estimated that 10% of the munitions used did not explode on impact or as designed, meaning that there's a huge residual contamination remaining after the war of ordnance that could blow up at any time. Uh, and the result has been, since 1975, when the war ended, more than 100,000 Vietnamese have been killed or injured by bombs that were left uh, after the war. Despite the best efforts of groups like Project Renew, people's lives are still shattered every year by unexploded ordnance. There's not much support for victims, but 25-year-old Guyen Duc Huynh is trying to make a difference. He's setting up workshops for bomb and landmine victims to make and sell bamboo dragonflies. I want to do uh, something have uh, landmine and handicapped people like me. Uh, I think the, I can have uh, for them, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, income. Uh, for the job. Uh, in 1994, uh, me and my twin brother, we are going to school. So on the way, is the I met uh, my neighbor. Uh, he he took some money and he this the uh, mentor. So after five minutes. Uh, so my boom. Quinn became known as the boy with no face. He even had a documentary made about him. Quinn had dozens of operations to restore his face after a businessman from Sweden led a fundraising campaign to help him. Now Quinn is doing everything he can to help others, but it's a difficult task. So I think many people, like my victim and handicapped people, uh, need uh, for your help uh, from um, many people in the world. However much trauma Win had to go through, he was one of the lucky ones. I've come here to see two women whose lives were turned upside down when their husbands died trying to dismantle bombs for scrap metal. They've received help from the NGO Clear Path International. It's given them scholarships for the children and also provided them with farm animals. But life is still hard. Tui lost her husband in 2009. My husband died, and since then, we have received a lot of help from Clear Path International. Without their help, I couldn't imagine what would have happened to my family. Life was difficult even when my husband was alive, but when he died, things became even more difficult. Tui's neighbor Hua lost her husband in similar circumstances. Um, yeah. 
After the war ended, people had to make a living. So after working on the field, farmers would search for materials left after the war to sell as scrap metal. My husband died when he found a bomb and it exploded. My life is more difficult now that my husband is dead. When he was alive, we shared the work together. We would both make money and raise the kids. Now I have to do everything, and life is three times more difficult. I have to worry about sending the children to school and buying food and clothes. When he was alive, we would support each other. No one knows exactly how many people are killed and injured every year by unexploded ordnance in Vietnam, but it's somewhere in the hundreds. NGO resources are stretched, so could the US do more to help? It currently donates three and a half million dollars a year to clear the UXO, the same amount as it spends every 20 minutes in Afghanistan, a quarter of the cost of a single Reaper drone. We should at least be spending in Vietnam the amount of money that we spend in one week in Afghanistan. And with that much money, we could basically end the problem in Vietnam. I mean, it is absolutely mind blowing that we do not come up with the money and the resources needed to really uh, make Vietnam safe because it is, a, it is an achievable goal. It can be done in the next five to 10 years. The majority of our funding uh, comes from the uh, Norway, uh, Norwegian people's uh, people's aid. Uh, but uh, we, we also received uh, some funding from the U.S. government and from other uh, countries like uh, Japan or um, Taiwanese, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan. But uh, in, in the future, we, we, we need more funding to, uh, so that we can complete our work because we would like to work to expand our work into the remaining areas in Guangxi province. We created the problem. We came here and we expended the greatest tonnage of ordnance in the history of mankind and then we walked away and we left the residual damage behind for the Vietnamese to deal with uh, every day of their lives for, for many years to come and it is a horrendous problem. This short film has shown only one part of the brutal legacy of the American war. Millions of tons of bombs were also dropped like confetti on neutral Laos and Cambodia as part of what US President Richard Nixon called his madman strategy of warfare. Many of these rusting assassins still lie in wait of farmers, children and others unfortunate enough to touch them. And the estimated 12 million litres of Agent Orange sprayed across Vietnam to destroy crops and trees still leads to severe birth defects across the country. To this day, America refuses to accept responsibility for that. During the filming of this documentary, Israel began another bombing campaign against the impoverished people of Gaza, using high-tech weaponry paid for with billions of dollars of aid from the United States. As American wars and those of its allies continue, perhaps it's worth remembering that after the guns fall silent and the TV cameras switch off, true peace can often seem a distant goal and perhaps the money used to fight these wars could be put to better use in places like Vietnam to rid the soil of the killers that lie within it. <laughs>